So this is the situation because the cell just ruptures and everything that's inside the cell just kind of oozes out. Okay, so that's the issue there. Now, I love, love this diagram because what it shows you, it shows you what happens with a normal cell when it's a reversible cell injury and then when it's irreversible. And there's one key thing here. So with normal, okay, everything's nicely intact. And then re reversible cell injury, we know that with reversible, it's definitely hydropic swelling, okay, that occurs. And so with this hydropic swelling, everything is just swelled up, okay? And then even swelling to the point where you have these blebs, okay? Because there's so much water that it just kind of have these sort of out pouches of, uh, through the cell membrane. But then when you get down here to the irreversible cell injury, what happens here is that you will get the cell membrane starting to lyse. Once the cell membrane starts to lyse, the cell is done, okay? So it's no surviving that. Um, and the other thing that goes along with this, too, is that the rest of the organelles will also start to lyse and start to disintegrate. Now, there are four different types of necrosis, okay? And then we're going to go over gangrene, and I'll just compare and contrast the two. Now, coagulative necrosis, this is going to be obviously the part, and this is the most common, excuse me, and this is also the one that is definitely from the ischemia, okay, so the lack of blood supply getting to the organ or tissue. And it will definitely cause a degradation of that plasma membrane, okay, where the cell membrane will just break off and now just kind of ooze out and everything just starts to die. Liquefactive is when now we have more of an issue inside the cell. So inside the cell, and they say the liquefaction of lysosomes. So lysosomes will start to liquefy not only just lysosomes, but even some of the other organelles. And so now you get sort of this sort of uh, fluid or liquid type appearance, okay? And when you look at it, and I'll show you some pictures, uh, they're little graphic pictures, but I'll show you some pictures of what this looks like. It's in what we call wet gangrene, okay? It's just very wet the tissue. Fat necrosis is death of adipose tissue. So adipose tissue, keep in mind, sometimes depending on which area we talk about, it sits in the body. Sometimes it does move around and is used for certain par um, processes. But if we have death of adipose tissue, what happens here is that the adipose tissue is not functioning, meaning that the adipose tissue would just sit there, okay, and now just accumulate and, and just cause issues. Or I would say it's not only just sit there, but the adipose tissue is dead and it will just it's just made up of fat, so we just ooze out more fat, okay, so to speak. Then caseous necrosis. Caseous necrosis, just to let you know, is secondary to tuberculosis. Okay, this is a condition that is secondary to tuberculosis. And they call this caseous because what happens, there is definitely a damage to the cell. The cell gets destroyed. All the organelles are done. Everything oozes out. But what happens, it has this extreme drying appearance to it. And it almost looks like, you know how crumbled blue cheese looks? It looks like that. Okay, so not to, I'm sorry, <laughs> the visual, but that's what it looks like. It looks like crumbled blue cheese, okay? So that's exactly what it looks like because all the cells start to die and just crumble up. Okay, so here we go with our lovely pictures. And I do have these same pictures posted on eCollege under the pathophysiology images. So the first thing here is our coagulative necrosis, okay, um, also known as our dry gangrene. Uh, most of you guys uh, probably have seen this before, and you know people that ever go through a situation where they're kind of like the frostbite, and that kind of thing. Um, they can go through this where there's not enough blood supply getting to the extremities. And we know that this is the last place blood gets to, and so the feet are actually more common than the fingers, but in any event, it can happen to both. Now, when you look at this, this is the um, liquefactive necrosis, which is also known as the wet gangrene. So what you see here is sort of like a little bubble, okay? And it almost looks like somebody took uh, acid and poured on it, okay? That's exactly what it looks like, and it just kind of fizzled, okay? So it, it just, I don't know the way to explain it, like that. Now, this is the fat necrosis. So the adipose cells are dead, and not only are they dead, but they're actually oozing out the fat, 
okay, that's made up of it. And so now you get this sort of accumulation of fat in that area. And um, just to kind of look at this, even though this is wet gangrene, if you look at this area, this also kind of, to me, looks a little bit like fat necrosis too that's going on there. Um, down below here, we have the caseus. Okay, so again, it's so dried out that it gets that crumbly looking blue cheese appearance. Um, to the point that the tissue loses its color and everything, okay, as you can see. That's that. Now, what they're showing you here in this slide as far as physiology is concerned with this whole process is that if for some reason extra calcium gets inside the cell, this is usually our trigger, so to speak, to this type of injury. So if extra calcium gets in, what it does is it increases the calcium that will therefore increase the enzymes that will help break down these uh, organelles. So this is the issue. The more calcium comes in, this calcium will now increase the enzymes that are supposed to break down the organelles that are inside the cell. Hence, here we go, ATPase decreases ATP. Can't do anything without ATP. Also, what will be increased will be phospholipase and proteoase, which will now start to damage the cell membrane and cause a breakdown of the cell membrane, actually. And then endonuclease. Endonuclease, this is an enzyme that will actually break down the nucleus, and therefore, if we don't have nucleus or genetic material, obviously the cell can't survive. So this is what happens when calcium comes in. Okay. And just quickly, gangrene, which is almost the same Thing pretty much is a necrosis that we went over. So with gangrene, dry gangrene is a form of coagulative necrosis. Um, one, I guess, kind of good thing about gangrene is that what happens here is that you can tell the area of the dead tissue as opposed to the healthy tissue, which I guess is a good indicator for amputation purposes or whatever may need to happen with treatment. Uh, wet gangrene, also known as liquefactive necrosis, which we just saw. And with that, that is typically found, they say, in internal organs. So say, for example, and we'll go over this later on in the digestive system. Say, for example, a person has a twisting of the bowels. Okay, so say, for example, the bowels get twisted up for whatever reason. And there's ischemia that happens at the intestines. Well, that ischemia is definitely going to lead to, obviously, cell death, tissue death. And then what's going to happen here, instead of them forming a dry gangrene, they're going to have more of a liquefactive, okay? So it's going to look more like that acid pouring on the organs. And then gas gangrene. I'm going to show you a picture of that. Not sure if you guys went over this in micro, but um, sometimes people can get infected with clostridium. And what happens, this type of bacteria can infect the muscle cells. And these, it will start to form what are called gas bubbles. And these gas bubbles will just kind of protrude through the muscle and actually damage it. Okay, so I can show you some pictures of that. So, you have the fat necrosis here, caseous necrosis, liquefactive, coagulative and dry gangrene. I do have two pictures on there to show you. They pretty much look the same. Um, and this person, poor thing, have all the toes. Okay. Um, and then wet gangrene. Even though it sort of looks like a dry gangrene, um, but it, this is probably not the best picture, but what you can see here is that uh, if you look closely, it, is, it sort of has that wet appearance to it. And that, see how it's shiny. Um, now when you get down here to gas gangrene, these bubbles here, okay, uh, pretty much is the clostridium that actually has infected this person's muscle tissue and forming these bubbles that's just protruding out. Um, honestly, I don't know how they treat that. Um, I would imagine it would be past the antibiotic stage, okay, because this looked like it really infected his whole leg there. I'm not sure if that calls for an amputation. I don't know how they treat that, to be honest, but just that picture is very bad because it really it has infected his whole thigh there. And so that's that. Now, this is actually where I'm stopping for chapter four. So I stopped at slide 25. I'm just gonna take it a little. Now, what, in case you're interested in what the rest of this slide goes over, 
it goes over basic physiology of cell that you guys already know. So it goes over apoptosis. Have you heard of that? Okay, you know what that is. It goes over apoptosis. We know programmed cell death. So it just goes over some basic physiology that you guys have had uh, maybe last term or two terms ago. Okay, so just in case you're wondering what it is, that's what it's talking about. And that's that. Okay, so we'll just leave it at that. Do you guys need another break? Yeah. Yes, no, yes? Okay. Okay, you can turn the camera on for me. Thank you. Take another break, and I don't mind taking short little breaks because I'd rather you, you know.